Hi, I'm Rory Green of XR Today, and here we're speaking with Roshan Rashu, the CEO and founder of Immersive IO. We're going to be talking about a few subjects today, namely AR and 3D commerce and marketing, as well as how businesses are leveraging immersive technology today without perhaps using headsets. But before we get into all of that, Roshan, it'd be great for you to introduce yourself, what Immersive IO are doing, and how you're helping to solve business problems today, leveraging AR, VR, and MR. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Rory, for having me. Uh, yeah, I think uh, my journey really started actually in creating 3D videos. Um, the whole story actually begins when I was working with a variety of different like retail brands, making them, you know, helping them with their product and brand discovery uh, on Instagram and short form uh, platforms like Instagram and YouTube Shorts. And I was making CGI VFX videos for these brands. Uh, but what I realized was um, 3D has a great way to communicate stories and go beyond just, you know, marketing purposes. Uh, and that's kind of when I fell into the, the XR rabbit hole, as I like to call it, where I realized, uh, you know, brands can actually leverage 3D assets for much more. And that's kind of where my story began. Um, that's how Immersive was born. So Immersive on a high level is helping brands reimagine and improve their online and offline shopping experiences, leveraging tech like XR and AI. Um, we started about a year and a half ago, and uh, our first solution was actually creating 3D virtual stores built on WebXR. And the whole idea was, how do we give gamified shopping experiences and move away from the traditional 2D website? Um, I think for context, uh, you know, today fashion has a lot of pain points uh, before I even talk about anything else, right? Uh, today, the pain points of online shopping, I think you and me, Rory, we've shopped. Uh, I'm sure you've returned something in the, over the last 90 days uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's more likely the case with uh, 30% of the time, right? I think 30% of all fashion related items are actually returned. And when you talk about e-commerce in general, uh, it is almost 200 to $300 billion of returns annually. Uh, that's a lot of money being burned by brands. That's a lot of inefficiencies. That's a lot of environmental carbon footprint. Um, and overall, it just shows inefficiencies, right? And deep diving into those pain points, you can understand why are people returning, right? Why, why are they unsatisfied? The majority of the time it's actually sizing related, right? It is, hey, you know, my brand, this, I'm trying to buy something fashion related, but it didn't fit me the way I thought it would. Uh, today, online shopping is two-dimensional, non-personalized. You see someone who looks nothing like you and you're expected to make a guess saying, hey, how does this look on me? How does this fit on me? And then if you're lucky, you're right. Um, that cannot be sustainable for the long run. And today, online shopping is 26 to 20% of all sales. It's going to go to 33% in this decade because it's just convenient, right? Comes to your doorstep, quick commerce, right? You have, you know, quick, easy deliveries now. Who knows, in 10 years, maybe even drones coming up and delivering stuff to our houses. Uh, but what's more important is it has to be efficient, right? Otherwise, uh, you know, if these pain points aren't solved, uh, it's just going to continue to be a more and more of a burning cost. And that's where we kind of came in and said, how do we leverage today's technology and today's hardware to create solutions for uh, this world? And that's actually why we used WebXR. Uh, building on the internet, we created plugin tools that help brands create various solutions from solving sizing related solutions using our sizing AI, uh, where we use you know, just a simple camera feed and can measure a person in real time and then compare that to the sizing guideline of a brand and recommend an actual like, you know, size they should buy uh, instead of just guessing games or taking a real measuring tape and measuring myself. Uh, we've helped brands with visualization through virtual try-on, and this can be helpful both on online and offline. Uh, we can bring this into mirrors for more engagement and personal focused shopping experiences. And last but not least, our virtual store, uh, where we can bring gamified shopping experiences, where you can walk inside, bring the whole store to your home, right? Whether that's on a phone, desktop, or a VR headset building frictionless shopping experiences on the web where end users can access it just simply clicking on a website and actually having a full 3D commerce experience using augmented reality and mixed reality. Fantastic. Thank you for breaking that down. And, you know, really talking about that uh, customer experience side of things there and also helping brands um, sell and make money. And what are the biggest lessons you've learned from that market segment, whether that be from the perspective of the accessible WebXR um, integration, being that being something that's easy for customers and then brands to pick up. But then yeah. also perhaps is there some, what about the pain points of actually delivering XR um, through this manner? Um, despite it being accessible, I imagine there's still some lessons to learn and some challenges to overcome. 
Yeah, that's a great two part question. I'll answer the first part on, you know, what are my lessons from actually enabling? I think the biggest helpful thing that brands are leveraging right now is augmented reality. I think um, according to Shopify and on Amazon, there's a couple of papers they've published. It's increasing sales, right? When customers can actually, I mean, I'm sure you've tried virtual, like, you know, putting on a furniture head in your, in your room and immediately you're, you're, you recognize, hey, like this is how it's going to look in my space. It's contextual. I'm confident to make the sale. And that same logic applies to jewelry, furniture, fashion, anything in retail. Um, and I really am a strong believer that XR, uh, bringing in also mixed reality content, uh, is going to help brands tell stories in a more personalized fashion. And that's where we're heading. Um, and device frictionless, I think the phone, right? the phone is the most powerful tool that has come out, right? I mean, everyone has one smartphone penetration across the globe is much higher than a headset penetration. Uh, that being said, um, I do believe that headsets can create better shopping immersive experiences, but as a brand owner, I don't think the brands we talk to, they, they are not going to make a solution only for one specific you know, device. Today, it's an XR headset. Tomorrow, it's AR glasses. Day after, it's optic lenses. I think the important thing is to build on the cloud and build frictionless experiences that you know, can work on multiple devices because we don't know what, what device a customer is going to actually be you know, exploring this website. They could be on their iPad. They could be on, on, their, on a laptop. I think it's really important for brands to think about how they can scale across the omni channel, right? Uh, not just on devices on online, but also bringing that online experience offline as well. I think offline shopping is not going anywhere, Rory. And I believe that it's going to be more experience oriented, more than just, hey, this is like a warehouse for all my inventory to sit. I think it's more on brand discovery, more engaging those customers because their limited geography presence of, of these spaces, but why will people come to your store? This is something that I think customers and brands need to be starting to ask these questions. And uh, it's really important that, uh, you know, we build that frictionless world. And I think the challenges here are um, actually asset creation itself, right? Uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, some brands actually have 3D assets, uh, especially on the manufacturing side, right? Um, they will use that to make their operations more smooth and, and you know, to help them with the you know, prototyping of their designs. Uh, but sometimes that just ends up stopping there. What we've realized is that same 3D asset can be used for marketing videos, for you know, helping with an XR related, uh, an online shopping sale through a virtual store. It can even be translating to an offline solution using AR mirrors, right? And a visual try on. All of this is 3D. And, and that's what something immersive has kind of, kind of, uh, built into our ecosystem is, is the 3D ecosystem, right? Once you build that 3D asset, whether someone else does it for you or we do it for, for our brands, we've realized that that's the actual key, right? That's how you get your return on investment, right? Because once you're investing, yeah, some of this stuff can be risky, right? It's, it's new waters, it's uncharted territory, especially when you touch something XR related in retail. There are not many like case studies that are there, but those that do exist show promise. Uh, but this is where you can say, hey, once that asset is created, no matter what, you can get a return on investment because that same asset, I'm going to make an amazing you know, 3D video for you that's going to bring product, uh, product awareness and brand discovery as well. So that's how you bring the whole ecosystem and that's how everyone wins. Yeah. Brilliant. And talk about that idea of an ecosystem and everyone winning as well. Um, you know, you're speaking about the way brands can use, uh, can leverage 3D assets, 3D content, et cetera, through the devices they have today, which is a very important point. I think that's the expertise that you can bring to us. So yeah. more broadly to other enterprise sectors, do you think there's perhaps a, uh, a reflection there of XR adoption sometimes can be focused on the hardware, as you say, smart glasses, MR headsets that change sometimes year on year. Um, how important is it for businesses outside of, a, of commerce and marketing, say in other sectors, to recognize or perhaps to take a little bit of interest there in a smartphone based um, web xr based um, 3d content and how can how can companies really come together to achieve that success without these new devices i think it's a fantastic question i think um, regardless of sector right today everyone is accessing a website right and majority of the time right that's going to be on an iphone or or, or a smartphone right um, i think if they are already investing in, you know, XR focused, uh, not even XR, just like a VR related focus, like let's just say for real estate, you've created a demo where you have your entire build in VR. 
Uh, I would say it's very easy to actually translate that into a web-based solution that I can then send to a friend on WhatsApp or put it on a newspaper and you scan a QR code and boom, I can actually visualize, you know, this actual 3D effect just from my cell phone itself. And I think that's where checkouts are happening as well. That's where, you know, people are, you know, they're always carrying their phone. And I don't think that's going away anytime soon. I think um, it's important to build for the future, but you have to think about today um, because at the end of the day, your customers live in today. They don't have, you know, they might not have those future, you know, optic lenses. They might not have the AR glasses. They may not even have a VR headset, right? But they definitely have a smartphone. And today, most high-end smartphones have incredible capabilities. Uh, iOS devices have LiDAR inbuilt in it, right? Which creates depth perception, creating better AR tracking. Um, and that is advancements that's going to push the entire, you know, industry in XR. Uh, if, if people start bringing in focus in, you know, not just hardware specific, but actually flexible and frictionless uh, experiences, because that's, I think, what the Internet's going to evolve into. It's going to be web XR enabled Internet uh, focused with, you know, options of immersion to, you know, quick commerce related to story driven commerce to to just in general, like more engagement focused uh, experiences. Um, that's, but honestly, Rory, it's such a fast growing space. I'm happy to say that anyone can can get into this right now. I think today what I'm talking about will be outdated in, in two years and three years. Um, I think it's really important to be in a collaborative world right now. I think XR is an industry. Everyone can learn from each other. Hardware people rely on software, software rely on hardware. Um, and I think it's really important that we prove and justify use cases for, you know, whether it's retail or, you know, different industries. Um, so everyone wins, right? The customer has to win, the brand has to win, and, you know, the enterprises as well have to win. Um, you know, so I think it's all about building those ecosystems, creating win-win opportunities. And hopefully in the next 10 years, we'll see a reality where, you know, everything is interconnected and, and interconnected. We have personalization on a very different scale. Um, and, and we're able to tell stories in a more, you know, uh, personalized and, and immediate uh, focus where I'm the main character of my own story. And that's what the dream I have. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And just to wrap up, we're obviously talking a lot about today's technology, which is vitally important. But let's talk about that tomorrow's XR technology that you're also discussing there too. Um, so when we wrap, before we wrap up, do you feel that, to, to tomorrow's XR reality, um, tomorrow's XR framework is being established. Do you feel the puzzle pieces are coming together to create that immersive future for businesses? And if so, what are those puzzle pieces? And perhaps where should uh, more future looking individuals or companies, where should they take notice and where should they perhaps put their eyes if they want to get a bit of a glimpse into their business future with ARV or MR? I think, I mean, you look at big tech, right? I mean, I'm very happy to say Immersive is even a Shopify partner, right? Like uh, brands like even platforms like Shopify are encouraging XR companies like myself, right? Now we're partners with Shopify and we have an app on the Shopify app store. Stuff like this can actually, sh it just shows that there is now a push towards this deep tech. Now you look at Meta investing tons of money into, you know, AR glasses and, and you know, and, and just actually going to AWE XR this year in Singapore, I mean, just seeing the amount of tech in hardware and software coming into making this industry happen, I'm very optimistic. Um, I think that right now we're in a transitionary period, right? But I do see a beautiful future where, you know, you know whether you're on an AR device or a smartphone or, 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 or a mixed reality headset, I believe that that frictionless omni-channel experience where we're entering this world, where the physical world and the digital world combine or the digital world. Um, with frictionless payment gateways, with frictionless, you know, with, with security, with a lot of that stuff. I think that's where we're heading. And I think also customers are ready for it. After the pandemic, I think there's been a lot of change on what customers are expecting, the way we're, 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 we're working with brands, what we're, how we're experiencing things, uh, with Generation Alpha coming into play, with Generation Z, with different behaviors. I think the time is ripe for brands to start thinking about how are they going to, you know, transition from, you know, web to, to, you know, whatever that future reality looks like. And if they're not, they will struggle in the near future. Um, they have a couple of years before this is something of pressing matter for them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. And for our readers who want to gain a little bit more insight into what you do at Immersive.io, where's, where's the best place, excuse me, for them to follow? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you can check us out on our website, uh, you know, HTTPS uh, immersive.io. That's actually our website. Um, you can also check us out on Instagram, uh, just I M E R S I V E dot I O. And feel free to reach out to me. My name is Roshan Raju on LinkedIn or any other platform. And uh, would love to, you know, be a part of the collaborative world we're building and be a part of your commerce journey or, you know, and just have a conversation about XR anytime. Great. Thank you so much for that. And brilliant sign off as well. I appreciate your time. Thanks for jumping on Cool. I've Thank been Rory Greener of XR Today. You can get more XR news by subscribing to the XR Today news channel and by following our social pages. Thank you so much, Rashad.